So I did it. So I painted that stepping stone there by the tree and we just put it by the tree. I chose a koi instead of a golf flag or something because it, I thought it was colorful and beautiful. But this is what it represents. The koi, actually, they have the ability. They, they swim upstream, climb up waterfalls. They're amazing. But they're determined fighters that don't give up. But at the same time, they're elegant and radiant in color. In addition to their beauty and determination, they're known to be courageous. They face challenges head on without backing away, and this allows them to overcome obstacles and achieve. Which I, exactly, which sounded like all of those women uh, and, and most of us as well. So that, that was the thought behind that. So if you see it, it is golf related. You can go. Well oh, what is on the back side of the stone? It is. If you gave a thousand dollar donation, there's a tree out here right above that credenza in the lobby. Right now, it just looks like a tree. It has little silver plated leaves on it. Well, each time someone donates $1,000 for anything, a tree or whatever, they engrave that on there. And I don't have exactly what it says on there, but I wrote what it says on that leaf on the back of the stone. So when we're all gone, that stone's still here, and somebody says, what is that stone? They flip it over. Uh, it's in memory of the WGA women golfers that went before who are now playing on God's greens, I believe is what it says. Yes. So, and the last time, sometimes sitting with your friends and playing golf is all the therapy <laughs> Has everybody signed on the home? I haven't signed either. Okay, now that I have y'all all stirred up and settled down, we'll, we'll, we'll start the meeting in college order. Okay. I know you're eating, but I still would like to say the pledge. There's a flag back there, but I always bring my flag over here because I thought we were in the pavilion. So, flag over here or one in the corner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
Okay, we'll start with membership. Lori, right before she gets a council of salary. Okay, we have a total of 229 members. Um, 86 of them are nine hole, 130 are 18 hole, and we have 13 social members. Um, and there's Talk louder. Talk louder. Nine hole, 86. 18 hole 130 social 13 for a total of 229 members um, and we have 147 in the hole in one pool uh, we have 21 new members so i would like if you um were not at the last meeting and stood up and introduced yourself and you're one of those 21 new members i would like you to stand and introduce yourself and it's really not scary do we have any new people in here are you admitting it? Yes! Yay! Yes! Yay! First meeting, uh, MJ Pritchard Wilson. Yay! Yay! Anybody else new? Okay. Uh, what is it mean? Dana Peck. So, I want to start by um, thanking the Spring Fling Committee for the tournament, our kickoff tournament that was um, Debbie Sugar, Maureen Ankwami, Carol Bossy, Lynn Gable, Sharon Jordan, and Debbie Key. <laughs> I know there's probably someone I missed, and if I did, I apologize. But I think it's really important that for people who are new, and I'm brand new, I am a newbie. I know I'm learning um, all about the Golf Association, but I don't know much. But I can tell you that the Spring Fling has a book. All the tournaments have, which I did not know. This book comes with. Your volunteer, when you volunteer to be on a committee, to be the chairperson for one of our upcoming tournaments. Now, Debbie Sugar still has her book for the Spring Fling, and if I had had it, I would have been able to go through and see how many times she has chaired that committee. Every year, I would like to say really easy because when you follow people like Peggy Lewis and Molly Worthen. And so many every page you turn, and, and all you have to do is call them back, and they help you all the way through. So it is the book that I'm about to get seen. <laughs> <laughs> this book is really, um, you know, it, I mean, it's it's a compass. It tells you everything that you need to know. So if you're afraid to sign up, I've never ran a tournament. I've never ran a tournament, not like this either. But I did step up as a volunteer to do President's Cup, which will be our next tournament. After I started looking in the book, I'm like, oh, I can do this. This has the past budget in it. It has the lunch menu from past. It has the different formats. It has the games that were played. It has who won, who was involved um, as committee members. And it does <laughs> even list some of the generous sponsors who have sponsored year after year after year. But did you know <laughs> that the WGA adds additional money per player to the entry fee? So when you sign up to volunteer to head some of these upcoming tournaments, not only do you get that entry fee money, but you get money from the WGA to help you with your budget to for lunch and all the other things that go along with it. You do not have to get sponsored. You have a budget. It's completely up to you. So for those who think, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to go get sponsored. You don't have to. We're a great community of volunteerism. A lot of times, some of the ladies will volunteer to help make eggs and breakfast and burritos and sandwiches. And 
There's lots of different ways to do it. We're quite creative. Please don't be afraid. You can grab your friend. Ah, Blackfoot babe. Is that what you call yourself on Blackfoot? <laughs> 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 You can also, like Debbie said, rely on our mentors, people in the past who've been presidents, who've been on committees, who helped, helped us get through. So with that said, we need some volunteers. <laughs> the next tournament, I went ahead and stepped up and I would love for anyone to help me who would like to for the President's Cup Tournament, that is May 7th and 8th. But we also need someone for member guests. Member guest tournament is gonna be June 26th and 27th. Hey, Ginger, what are you doing that day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, you know what? We can get you a babysitter. <laughs> Um, so, anybody, June 26th and 27th, anybody like to just be on the committee? I know there's pressure right now, and I'm going to step in here. Don't, I don't know, I'm not going to jump up and do that right now, but it's really give it a thought. You don't have to. There is a book like this for every tournament. Every tournament. Every tournament. And it has the years. And for those of you that have been in other women organizations, that's not always as generous as, as this one. They're awesome. They give that, they put in what they've done and give you their ideas. And like she said, you don't have to be a big fundraiser. Some people are great at that, some people aren't. You know, for a one day tournament, we chip in $5 per participant. For a two day tournament, WGA chips in $10 per entrant. For a three day tournament, we chip in 15. And, and that's in addition to the entry fee. So uh, please don't hesitate and do sign up and think about it. Get somebody to do it with you, you know, a pair. And then just let them know you're doing that and people will step up. But try and sign up to see Dina today uh, for that member guest and member member. Right? Member, member guest support. and member member are chairless, committeeless. Um, they're lonely. They need help. <laughs> they need help. So uh, this sign up sheet will be in the back. When I say goodbye, did you sign up? Um, as I catch you as you go out the door. Um, if you look also on your table, I guess you don't have to burn it up. You should see a flyer that I put there, and um, I'm really excited. I'm excited to announce that uh, the WGA is going to be sponsoring a girls' day at Glow the Life and Steel. This will be the Texas Rangers versus the Yankees on May 20th. It is a, it's set to be a 105 game. Before I begin, I'd like to say that this is an experiment. I'm not quite sure how it's all going to work out, but I'm going to give it my very best effort to make it the best trip ever. Um, but with that said, the cost is going to be $110. The $110 is going to include round trip uh, transportation and your, your ticket to the game. And we'll be leaving from the pavilion, going to Arlington, returning to the pavilion. It will be a long day. We're, we're going to um, get there early so that we have time to walk around, to check out the new stadium, to uh, visit Texas Live, the game, and then there'll be a little bit of time after the game as well to either go to the souvenir stand, go to Texas Live, whatever, before we're brought back home. It's on a charter bus, right? It is a charter bus. So I, I want to add to that. I hope that this is something that we continue to do, that maybe we do one in the spring, we do one in the summer, we do one in the fall. But it's not always going to be $110. It is this time because it's a Thursday, because it's a day game, because um, I was able to 
twist some arm. Uh, so, it, you know, next time it could be $100 or it could be 125 or it just depends. The bus um, was much reasonable or very reasonable for us because it's Thursday, you know, and same with the game, it's a day game. Um, so, unfortunately, as we move forward, there's only 56 seats. And so this is going to be kind of first come, first serve, whoever signs up and pays um, will be on the bus. Is there an opportunity for us to do more? I don't know yet, I really don't. It's hard to get 56 tickets in a group setting, um, especially when they're trying to do a little bit of, of social distancing. Of course, they won't be on the bus. Um, it is going to be WGA members only. So um, it's a girl, it's a girl's day. No guys either. Sorry, Jack, you can't go. <laughs> I guess I would say any questions. Do you know where you're in session? You know what session? Um, I I know that we will have the very best seats available. Um and the email I got this morning, is, but I, I won't, everything will be set in stone. If you look on her, I believe I said that um, the seat selection will be released on April 19th. Um, it may happen slightly earlier than that, but um, very good seat. Any other questions? So I have a sign, we do have a sign up sheet. Um, and we know nobody came prepared with money. Is that right? And being the treasurer, I'll say that. But we can go ahead and sign up, but it will be the first 56 that are paid. So if um, you can get your money to either any of the board members, Sally, Nina, me, um, as quickly as you can to, to secure your spot. Yeah, I can do. And I, if, if everyone, would like and anyone who's listening at home uh i can come up here tonight at five o'clock and um if you'd like to bring your check up at five o'clock and be marked off as paid we can do that as well so i'm sorry oh. i know it needs to be checked it needs to be uh check me payable to lake Iowa. Is that something y'all would want to do today at five, or would you rather just give uh, to board members? What you think? Well, because we're not going to come up here to do that. So don't come. And for those of y'all who don't know Nina, you know, she is well connected with the Ranger organization. <laughs> this is not our <laughs> That's one of them. That's one of them. So this is not a fly by your city or pants uh, trip. I mean, obviously she has the the end to get this all set up. So I think it will be a real special trip. Put on the new stadium and that that thing would be kind of neat. But it is a coach bus, and we would go that morning and be at the bus together and just have a good time if you're interested. Uh, and back to the tournaments a second. If if you don't know the dates of the tournaments and stuff, uh, all of that information is in the directory. If you will look in the front of the directory, it has all the dates of the play days and the tournament dates in that directory. Uh, so you can, if you want to check a date, then check a date. Okay, treasury report, Leslie. I put one copy of this on each table, but um, we had a beginning balance in our checking account of 16862207 had deposits of $2,849. That included the spring fling entry fees and a couple of memberships. Uh, we wrote checks for $9,543.81. That included spring fling expenses as well as our annual gin fees that we pay to the golf shop for our gin memberships. Uh, so our ending balance in our bank checking, our, our 
uh, operating account is uh, ten thousand one sixty seven twenty six. Our savings has six thousand two ninety eight fifty six, and so we have a total cash ending balance of sixteen thousand four sixty five eighty two. We have committed bins of one thousand four ninety nine for the remembrance tree and stones that will go around it. Since we're going to have a there's a new flagstone. flagstone around it. And then also $1,000 is um, committed to uh, help the MGA buy a roller for the green. Mm -hmm. We had a very- And the guys put in like a ribbon. Yeah, and we voted on that last month. So. Yeah. All right. Okay, I need a motion to uh, approve the budget. Brenda Fairbanks moved by the second. David's here, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Right. And y'all just ask me if anybody ever has questions on stuff. I'm glad to hear. Okay. And the the minutes the minutes were online. Were they are are they on are they online? No. Well, we'll approve we'll approve minutes for we'll approve minutes. Uh, next time for March and April okay and we'll get them we'll get them on the website uh, we're we're giving a hundred percent what you do know uh, are they ready she can tell the winners or whatever which they won't be doing the money right now but uh, she's going to try and get the um, scramble did anyone bring their envelope in here yeah. oh, oh mine's on my golf cart okay mm -hmm. i need these okay some people may have turned it into the first mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, just anybody else that has an envelope, give it to me before you leave. Uh, looks like, well, before I get into winners, next week we will not be having a play day because we donated that day to Collinsburg Regional Qualifiers. The boys and the girls both qualified. They both won districts, so they're going to <laughs> both have a legitimate shot at winning state. That's what their goal is. So, uh, saying that, next week, next Wednesday, we need about 26 to 30 volunteers with golf carts that are willing to drive kids and put their scores, Lauren's going to do it in Genius so they can keep up with it that way, put their scores in Genius on your phone. So whoever's driving the car will do that. And there will be two carts per group to help carry the kids. Also need people that are willing to donate your car for coaches to drive around and coach their kids. So if you're willing to, Looks like we'll do this sheet um, for anyone willing to drive kiddos. And on standby, on standby, anyone that's willing to donate their golf cart. What time is it? It's in the morning, like during our time. So they'll probably start at 8 or 8.30. 8 o'clock. And it might take five to six hours. Yeah. And, and your husband can go. MGA. MGA can go. So it doesn't have to be done. And the kids walk, don't they? The kids have to walk. You're just transporting their clothes. And yes. Them. <coughs> yes, right. I had a question if spectators can come and watch. Spectators can come and watch. The one thing I want to encourage you to do, though, whoever's driving a car, don't get involved with the kids on scorekeeping. That's their job as kids. That's what they have to do in the tournament. Other people can't help them keep score. So they have to talk among themselves to keep their score. So. And then they just tell you what score to what enter score into. Yeah. yeah. You don't tell them, no, you got a six. No mama stuff. No mama stuff. Don't do that. All right, let's see if Lauren gets this. So the next 
play day that we'll have is a week from this next two weeks from today, and we'll just be playing straight metal play. Um, scramble, leaderboard. I texted her and asked her to finish it. No, she did not. She doesn't really text me. <laughs> she just now texted me back and said yes, but still not yet. You know she's in trouble. She is. She thinks she is. The first place uh, team today with two over par, Shirley Parrish. <laughs> Sure, they made a picture. You're welcome, Charlie. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So you mean I can't keep whining? Hey, let's take pictures of her. We'll just say we don't want to hear. She did. She had a doctor. recipient this year. Uh, they're going to each give a 10 minute presentation uh, so that everyone can have input. The meeting is being live streamed. I sent you an email that said very important uh, voting link. You will need to go and click on that link and the three choices will be there. Uh, there's one vote for your email. It closes tonight at 12 o'clock. 
So we will click that tomorrow morning and let you know. But that way, everyone that wants to have a vote, whether they were able to be at the meeting or not, will be able to do that. So uh, our first group that would like to present to you is the Home Hospice of Cook County. And uh, Nancy Jackson. Yeah. You know, you can't be a really sunny day outside, even if the wind is blowing so hard, it blows the golf cart over. But, uh, you know, <laughs> hey. right. Well, my name is Nancy Jackson, and I'm the Director of Community Development for Home Hospice. And so I brought my friend with me, and also uh, Tamara Whitlow back here. Uh, we uh, are responsible for a lot of the stuff that we do within the community, and, and many of you uh, know us in one way or another. But I wanted to do a couple of things for you. Uh, one, we would love to be the charity tournament for you guys. And we would love to put it on. We already have a couple of sponsors that said that they would work with us. And uh, we have some other things, other people that had uh, committed to us if, if we do get to do a tournament. So, uh, but let me tell you why being a charity tournament for you and getting those uh, donations are so important. And so if you were to take in this room right now, so that table, this table, that table, and this one, there are 28 people, excuse me, 29 people, and if you add Leanne, that makes 30 people. And what does that represent in Cook County? Does anybody know? Not much. Not much. <laughs> it represents the number of hospices that serve people in Cook County alone. So 30 hospices. And of all of those, only Leanne over here is a nonprofit. Everybody at these tables, those other hospices are all for profit. And so people say, well, what does that mean? What that means is that for many instances for a for profit, their nurse to patient ratio is 25 to 1. So a nurse has responsibility for 25 patients. For us, our average is 12 to 1. And the reason we do that isn't because it's the most cost effective or least expensive. We do it because it provides the best care. And anybody that knows us, Home Hospice in Cook County, knows that we provide the best care that's out there. And we've been doing it for almost 40 years. We celebrate our 40th year next year. We were the first hospice to actually serve Cook County. And so what that means to you also is not only that we're the best and provide the best level of care, but we have the best nurses and we have the best medical directors. Um, of course, you know, obviously I'm going to tell you that because I work for them and the best support staff like myself, of course, right? Yeah, you're supposed to laugh at that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, we have personal care aides and social workers and uh, spiritual care. And we have the best volunteers that could ever be. We use volunteers in lots of ways in our program because we are a nonprofit. And so if we can leverage the skill sets of our volunteers, then that means sometimes we can put our money in our nurses rather than maybe our administrative staff. Does that make sense? And so that means a lot to people that we serve. And so this next year in Cook County alone, we'll probably serve from a patient's and family perspective, about 1,200 people in Cook County, probably this year, about 1,200 people. And of those, at least 100 to 150 will be in Lake Kiowa. And so you think, wow, that's a lot. Well, you know, it's, I mean, we, we serve not only the patient, but also the family. And so people know us obviously as hospice care, which is end of life care. You also have information on your table about our palliative care program. And palliative care is for those that have an advanced or serious illness, something like COPD, congestive heart failure, um, cancer. And those people are out there, they're still seeking treatment. They're, they're doing their best uh, to have a good quality of life. And our palliative care program helps them with many, many things. And so it's not hospice, uh, but it is support in one way or another for them. We also, a lot of people may not know, but we have a, a very good bereavement program. 
so for grief and loss. And in fact, we're excited because tomorrow night, after over a year, we're going to start an in-person support group again at our office in Gainesville. And I don't know about you, we all know that this last year we all suffered in lots of different ways with COVID and not being able to see people. But people have a lot of grief in many, many different ways because of the losses they may have had. And so our support groups provide that. We also do a program called Bear Hugs, and that's why my buddies up here. Um, our Bear Hugs program is one that a lot of people know about because what we do is uh, we offer the family members of our patients, if they want to bring in clothing or a blanket or something that represents that patient, then we'll make bears for them. And so it becomes, again, a comfort to them over things that have happened. Some of you know us as uh, our Camp Dragonfly program, which is a camp for kids that are 7 to 12. We just did one in March, and we had kids from Valley View, we had kids from Kalispers, and also from Gainesville that participated in our grief and loss camp. And those kids come because the one thing that they learn is the fact that not only do they have a good time, but they learn some coping skills along the way of how to deal with grief. Because kids are difficult to show their emotions because they're very good at protecting their adults. And so rather than show their emotions many times in grief and loss, they hide that. And we don't know that sometimes they're suffering. And so our camp helps them understand that they're not by themselves. They're not the only one that suffers from a loss in some way. And in fact, this past camp that we just did in March, um, the majority of the kids have been in, impacted in one way by COVID. Many have lost a grandparent um, unexpectedly due to COVID. And so it was a very interesting camp of the things that have been going on. You may not know that at any given time, 18 to 20% of our patients for veterans. And so we have a very extensive veteran program. Well, in fact, Tamara heads that up for us. In, in our veteran program, we met veterans with other veterans if they want somebody to come out and talk to them. Because one thing that we know is many times they need somebody to talk to, but they won't talk to anyone that doesn't understand what it was like to serve in the military. And, uh, and our veterans program has actually reached the level four. There's five levels. Uh, but from a national perspective, we're ranked there. We're also ranked as the top hospice in 2019 and 2020 by the best in Texoma. And so people, that's almost like a, a People's Choice Award, if you will. People voted on us. Um, and so we know we make an impact that's out there. But we can't do that as a nonprofit without funding. And so we have donors that provide things. We you know, do fundraisers. We do different things. But being your charity tournament, I think, would be a huge piece for us. Not only do we have an opportunity to give back to you, uh, because I guarantee you, you'll have a good time at our tournament. But even more than that, you will make a difference for members that live here at Lake Kiowa, as well as the community in general. So not only Lake Kiowa, but also in Cook County, uh, and we touch a little bit in Denton. We also serve Montague County. And, uh, and so we make a difference out there every day. Um, I don't know if you have, if you want questions and answers and things like that. Um, but um, if you have any for me, I'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you um, after we get through. Uh, and one thing that I would encourage you to do is if you don't choose us, as a charity, and that's your choice, that's why we vote along the way, is that we do ask you to volunteer for us. And be a volunteer, and I have quite a few volunteers that are in this room right now, and I can tell you they are the best people, and they're the reason I live out here. They've been at me for over three years, actually four years, to move out here, but they are the best people that I know, because the pure heart they have for giving back to others. And there is no doubt in my mind that everybody in here likes to do that. And we all want to make an impact. So we can do that together. So thank you very much. Thanks so much, Nancy. Thank you, Sally. Okay, next, Gary Foster Foundation, Susie Holloman. Oh, 
Well, I brought my friend and board member, Leslie McElroy. <laughs> Okay, a lot of you, a lot of you know me and a lot of you do not. Um, I'm the crazy lady that three years ago decided to make a difference in foster care. And um, so three years ago, and Leslie uh, and my board members and all of us got together three years ago and decided that we wanted to create and make a difference in foster care. And this is very personal to me. I am a Retired art teacher. I've lived out here at Lake Kiowa for going on 12 years. Uh, when I retired from teaching, I became a oh ladder. Yes. 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 Okay. When I retired from teaching, I teacher, can sure that I teach that closer in life. Okay. Uh, when I retired from teaching, um, I became a CASA, North Texas CASA, and I was a CASA to a teenage girl. And uh, I had her for five years and she aged out the system. And it just really, really frustrated me the lack of foster care, the lack of foster homes. And um, I grew up in the Dallas foster care system. And so I reached out to my foster sister, former foster sister, Colleen Gary, G E A R Y, it's spelled G E A R Y, pronounced Gary. Uh, so I reached out to Colleen Gary Pat. She and I shared a room when I lived with the Gary family. Um, and I, like I said, it was just, it was on my heart to do something and try to make a difference. So on this level, I am the crazy lady out here that they're like, you're going to do what? Oh my gosh. And, um, but it came together with Colleen and a, we are, um, we just, we started out as Gary Girls Ranch. A lot of you know us as Gary Girls Ranch. Um, and that was because I was a teenager in foster care. So to me, uh, helping teenagers in foster care was a priority and it still is. However, we partnered in the last year and uh, with Arrow Ministries, Child and Family Ministries, and they do our licensing of our foster parents. And um, on their suggestion, they said, you need to expand the intake of your children. Uh, there's a lot of need out there, yes, for teenagers. So with their advice, we became Gary Foster Foundation. And I know that's getting a little confusing out here, but one thing has not changed, we're helping children. And Leslie has some handouts, and these are just pictures. I <laughs> She's not been <laughs> alone. <laughs> But I just thought it's more important to show you pictures of the children that we are helping out there at Gary Foster Foundation. It took us three years of raising funds and donations and grant writing and so forth to be able to open this first house uh, of a foster family that is out there on the ranch. And at this time, we have it's been a year now, and we have helped eight to ten children already. And the home accommodates six, four to six children in the foster care system. And we have two loving, wonderful foster parents, licensed foster parents, and they're licensed for Region Three, which is a huge region of 19 counties. It encompasses from Dallas, Fort Worth, all the way as far north as Sherman, the Tacoma area. So it's a huge area uh, for these kids. And uh, we have two loving foster parents, and we have six children, and we have two dogs and two cats and 10 chickens. <laughs> in this first home out there. And like I said, I kept this very simple. My cards are on the table as well. If you go to our website, it's very informative. Uh, you can see pictures of the house and what we're doing. And Leslie, where, where are we located? Where are we and, located? And how much land do we have? We have 11 acres <laughs> donated. Thank you. <laughs> I, get off, I get off subject. I've got two minutes, so I'm trying to say a lot. But uh, we have 11 acres that was donated by Maggie on over here. God bless her. Is a temporary site plan. We're having a new site plan drawn up, but this shows a little bit. Turn, uh, well, yeah, turn this the is the road way. coming in. Coming yeah, up, do, do this way. Okay, we are out and <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Man, it takes 20, it's 25 minutes from the east gate out there to the property, and it's kind of crazy out there because it's on Martinic Road. And it's Dorchester Water, it's SNS School District. The bus goes right in front of the property. 
and it is actually how residents. So that's, but we are out in the country and it's a wonderful environment for kids and families and so forth. So this is the ranch road back. This is the first home that is existing right now with that family that I was telling you about. We are breaking ground. This is why I say we have a new site plan, but we're breaking ground on home number two. Yay! Hopefully next month. Yay! Yes, because we have received uh, donations and some grants to enable us to go ahead and break ground on home number two. And we have a site plan that will eventually have eight homes on the property. And we have um, a greenhouse, a 3,000 square foot greenhouse we want to put on the property. There's a pond here. Uh, we want an activity center to be built eventually as well. So uh, tell them about our foster care closet. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, we have programs. Our programs are the one is Gigi's foster closet, and it's named after the Gary family was instrumental in my gift care brought up in foster care, and they made sure I had good placement. And the I kind of want to explain a little bit about community, the difference in and what we're doing is when you build a community of foster homes such as this, and we have visited several foster home communities, so we know we have a plan, is that you benefit from all of these parents on the same page, doing the same mission of helping kids in foster care. It also enables us, we have these are five bedroom, four bed homes. It enables us to help more children at once. It enables us to bring in sibling groups. Uh, I was a sibling group of five, and so we were always split up. But this, this is a situation where you can help sibling groups that can be in the same neighborhood, if you will. Um, so, and then one, what we're trying to do is build this community of support from us and helping them with various programs and outreach. And we have Gigi's Closet on the property, which is helping the surrounding communities as well as our foster families and Gigi's Closet has clothing and shoes and books and educational materials, as well as our outreach program, which we have several foster families in the area of Grayson County, which is a pretty good since the house is located in Grayson County. There are several foster families out there in the community that we have helped by providing furniture and clothing and so forth. So that's our Gigi's Closet outreach program. And also, the property that was donated to us, this building that is Gigi's closet out there. So it's full of clothing. We have hundreds of bins of clothing and shoes and so forth out there. Um, and then eventually, like I said, we want to have our greenhouse project, and that will be a wonderful educational thing for kids to learn the gardening and so forth. 3,000 square foot greenhouse. God bless you, Maggie. Good. Don't make that as well. <laughs> and um, so, you know, that's a wonderful program for these kids. So we have a long way to go, but we've had a long, uh, we've been very successful and we are just thrilled to death that we've been able to help as many children as we have. We have three families in our network, meaning we have parents who are willing and ready to move to the property and help more foster children. But at this time, since we have a timeline which god willing and everything else in this world is, is just you know kind of interfered with every plan so i don't put it in date but in november is when we hope to have the second home completed and at that time uh we'll have an open house that we were, weren't able to have because of covid at this first home and um where was i going with that you're done I am. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you sure can. We a volunteer organization. In other words, we don't pay any employees. We work. I've worn out my board. We have a wonderful board. We do everything on a volunteer basis. And yes, we have volunteers that we would like to go to our website, volunteer as a mentor, a resident, a babysitter, and all of those other <laughs> A gardener. That's awesome. That's awesome. We're going to try to keep it in the next thing. So you can after after let them just do their 10 minutes and then we'll open it to question and answer for all. And here is the American Legion, Miss Donna Dillon. I'm sorry, I can yell. Okay. 
<laughs> My husband says when I get that Italian voice going, that you can hear me for several hours. Okay, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Donna Dillard, and I am a member of the American Legion Auxiliary. And I'm here today on behalf of the American Legion and the American Legion Auxiliary of Lake Tyler to request your consideration to the Lake Tyler WGA Charity Tournament to be held in November. Um, in addition to this presentation, and I'm so sorry, y'all, you have to understand, I'm so passionate about this program that I'm going to get scatterbrained and I'm going to go off all over. So I took notes. So um, I'm going to try to stick to my notes and uh, go with this. And, and I apologize. I'm. We had it working a minute ago. <laughs> That's okay. In addition to this presentation, after the meeting today, the unit officers and I will be in the back of the room to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, our American Legion Auxiliary Officers are our President, Maggie Ahn. Our Vice President Membership Chair is Gay Ann Wright. She couldn't be here today. Our Secretary, Kathy Wilson, back there. And our Treasurer, Marilyn Board. Okay. I'd also like to introduce an officer of the American Legion Post 265, Jack Leeds. He's in the back of the room. And I'll start out by telling you just a little bit about the American Legion Auxiliary, in case some of you have not heard of our organization. And it's okay. I had I had a the well, pictures. the people online can see it. Does that okay. count? Our organization is over 100 years old, and we are the world's largest patriotic volunteer organization. Our reputation has been built on our ability to put 100% of our donations and fundraising efforts into our programs, to support veterans, their families, and our communities. A not-for-profit organization, so all of our funds go into programs supported by our communities. The American Legion Auxiliary has a mission, and our mission is to support the American Legion and to honor the sacrifice of those who serve by enhancing the lives of our veterans, military, and their families, both at home and abroad. And they go on to say, for God and country, we advocate for veterans, we educate our citizens, we mentor our youth, and promote patriotism, good citizenship, peace, and security. You can always find our members at work in their communities, demonstrating the passion and heart that we have for those who serve our country to protect our freedoms. Some of our core programs that the American Legion Auxiliary uh, supports include patriotic youth programs, including interaction with local schools and community events, supporting our veterans, their military, and their families, uh, our advocacy efforts and legislative priorities. I don't know if many of you have heard of the GI Bill. That bill was actually, it's just an example of one of the bills that was created by a resolution from the American Legion and presented to Congress. So, uh, of course, that was quite a while back. We have other bills that the American Legion has introduced to Congress as well. Uh, we also do disaster relief and emergency funds for members in our community. Fulfilling our obligation to veterans, their families, and our communities is an expensive task. So we must rely on the generosity of our loyal supporters to continue our many outreach programs. The Lake Kiowa American Legion Post and Unit would partner together in this tournament to support programs of the American Legion family. The programs that we're focused on are girls and Holy State programs, funding scholarships for local students, and support of our veterans housed in VA centers and homeless shelters in the North Texas area. The American Legion, Lake Howell Post, and Unit 265 would like to fund at least two girl, two high school girls for the Girl State program. Uh, and this program, uh, they have to be sponsored by an American Legion unit or American Legion Post to attend Girl State. And Callisburg doesn't have that opportunity because there's not been an American Legion Post unit in our area. To, to do this. So we would love to give those kids an opportunity to, to attend these programs. Uh, we'd like to also sponsor two high school boys to attend the Boys State program. 
It has been said that these two programs are the most respected and coveted learning programs presented in the United States. I don't have time to go into all the programs right now, but I will have information in the back room about these programs. If you don't, if you would like to uh, stop and ask questions or look it over, uh, these programs are for students, whether they're homeschooled or in high school or whatever, entering their senior year of high school. They only get one shot at this. So, uh, and it is a week long program. And there's going to be information in the back, but you can ask our very own band president here. Sally Reed was a girl state citizen. And I've been told that Joe Dorman was a boy state citizen as well. So uh, uh, it's, it's a pretty good program. Um, we also plan to proceed with a scholarship program for area students to help with the cost of attending college. And we would like to provide much needed toiletry items and canteen coupons to veterans in our VA hospitals in Dallas and Bonn. A canteen coupon is, is like a gift certificate to the store there at the, at the hospital. If anybody's ever been to the VA hospital, it's like its own little community, its own little city. And these veterans are up there in the hospital without anything, uh, you know, toiletries, chewing gum, whatever they need. Um, and these stores have that, but it costs money. And a lot of these people don't have that money when they're there. So we provide can what they call canteen books, and it's just like five, ten dollars here and there, and they are so, so, so appreciative of this money that they get so that they can feel independent and, and go into these stores and they're at the VA center and buy the necessary items that they may need. So uh, all of these programs require funds to be raised through donations and fundraising events throughout our community. This tournament would provide much needed funds for these local programs. On behalf of the American Regional Auxiliary Lake in Unit 265, we thank you for allowing us to present this request. The financial contribution from the charity tournament to our programs would be a wonderful example of how our community can continue to support our effort to care for those who protect our freedom, and for that we're most grateful. It is also very fitting that this tournament is scheduled for November 10th, which is the day before Veterans Day. I would like to close with a brief story of an experience that I had and why I am such an advocate for this organization. I had attended a Ranger ball game and was leaving the ballpark when I met up with an elderly couple that were walking through the parking lot. And the gentleman was wearing a ball cap with the word veteran on it. So as I often do, I smiled and I told him, I said, thank you for your service. To which the man looked at me and he said, you were worth it. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> So I thought about what he said, and it hit me that this man was so proud of his country and was willing to lead his family and fight for my life to be free. Our veterans and active duty military realize this country's worth defending, and they're ready to give all because we are worth it. It became very important for me to recognize and acknowledge that. I strive to live up to that man's belief by being grateful for what we have and making sure that their families are taken care of while they're away. As a member of the American Regional Auxiliary, I'm doing just that. It is my way of passing that one. I thank you for your time. And again, I'll be in the back of the room if y'all have any questions after this. And if my time's not up, Jack, do you want to stand up and you actually have one minute? One minute, Jack, one minute. <laughs> I'm just sure guys any questions you might have. Great presentation to all of you. We appreciate you. Uh, we wanted to get this going pretty quickly. The charity tournament isn't until November 10th, but there's a lot of preparation for it. Uh, those that were here before was before my time, but y'all did out just an amazing uh, charity tournament. I think the first year we here, they raised eight thousand dollars for the fire department. Well, we couldn't have it last year because of COVID. Uh, they the year before was the fire department. And then Abigail's 
Yeah. None of these three have been sponsored by our, our, by our charity tournament yet. They have not. So it's important. There is so much need out, out there. All three of these organizations are so worthy uh, and do, and they give, you know, they're, they're all great recipients for that. Uh, if you want to ask questions of any of them, you may do that at the back. If there's, if somebody has a burning question that they feel is something that really just everybody needs to know, uh, or if y'all want to have a question answer, we can do that as well. But we can do it back there. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I brought my iPad and Lori has her computer. If there's anyone that's a little nervous about the process or want us to show you on there, on your email deal, we've got that to show you, but you must vote through that through that link on your email. And then all of the emails have WGA and a little golf flag. So, uh, and it says very important charity tournament voting link. So, uh, and then the last two things, uh, Kobe, Kobe, go away. <laughs> Girls night out. Back on October 5th. Uh, and the committee last year, you know, they worked so hard and they thought oh, we had this cute idea. We not, I said, y'all are the best. <laughs> so anyway, they're they're gonna continue with that. So Girls Night Out is a go. Uh, it's October 5th. And the Christmas dance is also a go. It is December 3rd. So those things are done. Anything else? Uh, it's a surprise. It might not be a surprise. I'm not on the girls' night out. Yeah, I'm like that. Anticipation. Okay, anything else? Then the meeting is adjourned. And if you have questions, please feel free to ask it. Like, thank you all so much for coming and presenting. The sign up for the Rangers. Uh, girls stay at the ballpark is in the back. It's, it's in the back. And also the golf cart thing for now.